All right, this is going to be about biofilm and mold forming in your nutrient stock tanks. So we've had these very large nutrient stock tanks that happen to be see-through, which is not ideal, and they're very large, also not ideal. These could just be five gallon buckets, but this is what we have to work with, and they consistently just get completely full of mold or biofilm, a little bit of both. So biofilm forms when there's high humidity and then we use these wave makers to disturb it and like keep the water moving constantly. So we've got our nutrients mixing in there and these wave makers do a pretty good job of moving things around. Like see that, this one's totally fine. But for some reason or the other, our acid tank, pH adjust, pH down, this one just develops a lot of biofilm. So we clean it out every few months, but you can see it gets injected through here. Then this mixing tank is all over there. So I just came back from a few weeks off and this just exploded. So you can imagine this is going to be all in our lines, in our drip irrigation. It can clog things very easily. A lot of people use pesticides like zero tall, dosed at a fixed rate to combat this but we don't have a pesticide license, so we don't use that. We just keep cleaning the tanks out and we're working on a solution right now. But this is what it looks like. It's extremely disgusting and hard to get rid of. And I'm gonna update things as we go through this. All right, so our wave maker is completely covered in this um, biofilm and then our injector. So these, these dosatron nutrient pumps pull the currently dose amount of nutrients from this tube, which is in these concentrated tanks. So we can accurately give our plants the right amount of nutrient at the right time. But these pumps also get completely clogged with biofilm. Disgusting. So we have to clean these out and help prevent this further. So I think the best solution we can do is get all black, small tanks that we can clean out faster, easier, and then I, I'm, a, I'm personally opposed to pumping pesticides into here to prevent this. And I mean, I know tons of commercial growers do that. They use zero tall, it's fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this the right way. Okay, so I took apart the Dosatron incoming nutrient pumps here. So you can see there's a bit of biofilm in there. These are soaking in bleach because I really got a lot out, but there's still a bit left. Took apart the pieces here, those are fine. And then our tank has to come off the wall. Luckily we have ball valves that we can just unscrew and break this right off the wall or take it off the wall, it won't even break. And then I'm going to deep clean this tank and then I'm gonna deep clean these and I'm gonna pump a line cleaning fluid through here, give it a once around before I even refill this at all, so what's happening. All right, we've got it detached. Working our way through it, that is soaking in isopro alcohol and bleach. This is what I pulled out of it. Absolutely disgusting. So much biofilm has accumulated, it's disgusting. All right, all cleaned out. Got it back on the wall. I'm still working on these pieces. So our wave maker, I, I believe the problem, and one of the main problems, is that it was completely, this entire thing was just full of uh, biofilm. And so I've cleaned it out a, a few times now and draining tanks. This is what I would use, uh, these are what we use for hydroponic, like this is a dead plant, we call them idiots, but instead of these giant, clear, very hard to clean tanks, I am going to just go to five gallon buckets that are completely dark dark lid and then you just cut a hole and stick the dosatron through there that's 100 percent the way to go or you need wave makers that can keep up with your flow and then or you could use pesticide but like i said wave maker dark tanks that's going to get you a long way and all right i'm cleaning up the mixing chamber doing okay look at all that all that biofilm coming out of there and it's just a huge huge thing huge process to take this off the wall. You have to disconnect all this stuff. You know, you cause a huge amount of water. Even though I drained it, all this water comes out. Who put the electrical outlet right there? Oh well, you know, it's just 
it's a huge process. This, when you get biofilm in your system, it's a massive headache. Take precautionary steps to prevent this, preventative steps, whatever. All black tanks, much smaller, cleanable, and just stay up on this because you don't want to have to take this all apart, clean out every single line. It's a huge mess. Okay, so we are wrapping up here. The tank is clean. We've got nice clean water in it. I haven't put any new um, pH down in there yet, but thankfully that is clean. I'm gonna be transferring over to a more sustainable option, which is a black five gallon bucket. So much easier, simpler, and will form either no or much less um, biofilm. So definitely gonna do that. And this is just also a side note, this was impossible. Like we spent about two and a half hours just trying to close this seal. It's still dripping very slightly. So I'm gonna have to have, I don't know, someone come fix it or I'm just gonna have to spend another few hours trying to fix that. But it's just one of those things where I have 20 hours in a week to do like the lab maintenance for all this stuff. So I planned on doing plant maintenance and cleaning floors. You know, it doesn't matter what the plan was for the day. This was the curveball that you just have to deal with and get over it and so the filter was completely full of biofilm, so I had to clean it out, took it apart, and now we have a constant leak. So it's just a matter of, you know, being part of a, just part of being a grower, and I guess part of life is just um, taking the daily curveballs of the cultivation center and just doing as much as you can with the time you're given to keep it as healthy and as clean as possible and have the healthiest plants possible.